This is Kathy Slamp of Bessel Ministries, and it's been a couple of months since we sent a newsletter, so this month we're sending an audio message about our work in Africa. In January of 2013, we came to South Africa to teach in a Christian college for about four months. During those four months, we enjoyed the students and this lovely atmosphere outside of Johannesburg. Across the street from the college is this marvelous convention center, and during that time we were able to participate in some of the activities that took place there. At the end of those first four months, Dr. Philly Chambo, director for the Church of the Nazarene in the continent of Africa, invited us to return and travel extensively, training people in discipleship. And travel we have. In the last two and a half years, in addition to many places in South Africa, we have been to nine different countries teaching, preaching, and speaking. It has been amazing. We've been to Swaziland and Namibia. We've been to Zimbabwe and Zambia. We've been to Kenya and Ethiopia. We've been to Madagascar. We've been to the country of Lesotho. And we've been, of course, to Botswana. And now, coming up, we will be going to several more countries before we go home in April of this year. During these years, we have met many dedicated missionaries. Here are just a few. And then we have met the hardworking staff at the regional office. In Kenya, we visited African Nazarene University which is an outstanding institution, not only in Kenya, but in Africa. This building is dedicated to Harman Smelsenball. And here we have it again, a beautiful, beautiful campus. Possibly one of our biggest surprises in coming to Africa was being invited to speak for the Africa Salvation Army Leadership Conference. And here we are with the Chief of Staff for the Salvation Army International. And here are some of the ladies on Sunday morning. We were the only ones there that weren't in uniform and there were about 2,000 on that Sunday morning. We have both been deeply impressed and warmly received by the local leadership in the churches in Africa. And here are some of the local pastors. You can see this beautiful smiling faces and what a thrill it has been to work with all of these individuals. In all of these countries, we've been to church buildings of all sorts. Some are large with thriving congregations and then some are just small churches and we've even been to places with mud floors. As we have gone from country to country and district to district, David's main assignment is to train men and women in discipleship. You can easily see that hundreds of people are coming and wanting to learn how to make disciples in the nations. To date, in these 10 countries where we have been, David has trained approximately 2,800 people in discipleship. In addition to teaching, on most Sundays, David is invited to preach and God is blessing in beautiful ways. The music, the building, the crowd size and the language may vary, but the spirit remains the same wherever we go. And this particular church was such a blessing. Just a few short years ago, it was a restart with less than 10 people. This is a fraction of the number who were there that day and on Saturday the day before, David trained 100 people in discipleship. What a blessing. I have been busy as well doing what I've done in the States, speaking to women's groups here in Africa. Sometimes we have our breakout groups outside, and sometimes they make big mistakes. But God is blessing the women of Africa just like those of us in the States.
This is a beautiful afternoon having lunch with some lovely women in a town called Rustenburg. And just like any other event, there must be a committee, and this is it. Rustenburg, again, is a place where they speak Afrikaans, and this was an Afrikaans women's retreat. This particular night, I was actually asked preach at a conference, and this is another women's event in Swaziland in a tent outside. Here are just a few of some lovely women I've met as I've traveled around. These three ladies were from Kenya, Swaziland, and South Africa. In our traveling, we've taken some time to stop in the banana plantations and even spend a night or two by the Indian Ocean. Anywhere you go in the world, the children will capture your heart, and they do that in Africa as well. Speaking of children, we visited this large Nazarene school in Limpopo and were pretty impressed to see two buses like this sitting in front of the school. And of course, Africa would not be Africa without the wild animals, and we've been privileged to see the big five and a lot more. This ugly thing is a warthog. It's so ugly, it's cute. Beautiful birds. This is an impala skin that we purchased to take home to our grandsons. These birds' nests are very common, and sometimes you see 30 or 40 of them in one tree. This big boy was right beside our car. And you can tell where these were, right in front of our car. And just like we do, they kind of like to touch one another. Africa is a continent of many contrasts. From poverty to prosperity, let's take a quick look at some of the views of Africa taken just out the window of the car as we drove along. Roadside stands and kiosks like this are prevalent in every country that we have visited, both physically and spiritually. Just like anywhere in the world, people are carrying heavy, heavy loads. From voodoo to Zionist, strange religions abound across Africa. So it is to the people of Africa that we come. This guy doesn't know about the Portland Trailblazers, but he was thrilled to know that we did, and he was searching to learn about God. Presently, we will be in Africa until the end of April. In February, we will visit the landlocked country of Malawi. Possibly in March, we will go to Mozambique, and the entire month of April, we will be in West Africa visiting at least four countries. We appreciate your prayers and we thank you for them immensely. This is an amazing task and we're doing a lot of traveling and sometimes in some rather dangerous situations. So we thank you for your prayers and for your support. Africa and what we're trying to do is bigger than both of us. In fact, it's bigger than all of us, but it is not bigger than God. We have this treasure in jars of clay to prove that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Thank you again for your prayers and your support, and we'll be back next month.